Hey guys, Jason here and stopping by for another five minute lesson today. Today I want to touch on some lending, some borrowing, uh, structuring, some strategy around when we go for loans. And uh, it's a little bit technical, but uh, it's called cross securitization. Some people call it cross collateralization. Uh, it might be bundled in with the comments around all monies clauses. But listen, as a property investor, and especially if you want to own multiple investment properties over the long term, and you want to bust through uh, two or three properties overall in your portfolio, you've got to understand what happens in this space called cross securitization, cross collateralization. Let's have a look. Um, the idea as a property investor um, is the same. I'm going to give you two examples, the wrong way to do it and the right way to do it. Okay. And so we go uh, and have a look at where we have some borrowing ability or some cash and some capital and some income, our jobs, to go ahead and purchase an investment property. Nine times out of 10, the unsophisticated investor, the uneducated investor would go to a bank. They would go to one bank that they have been with all of their lives because they have got their savings account there. Uh, they've probably got a credit card there. They might even have a car loan there, whatever it is. So they go to their bank and they say, hey, listen, and they've got their home loan there, okay? And uh, listen, I would like to um, buy an investment property. And so the bank says, sure, no problem. Um, let's have a look at your situation. And if you qualify, uh, they'll lend you some money. Now, every single bank in the whole of Australia will offer you to do what's called cross-securitization, cross-collateralization, which means... Um, and this is the important part, just so you guys know, which means, hey, listen, we will use your home as the security to buy the next property, which is fine. That happens. It's normal. It's not right. It's not the right way to do it for a sophisticated investor, an investor who wants multiple properties. And they said, listen, let's just connect what they call cross securitize this property here. So you've got a property and you've got enough uh, security or equity in this property. Let's say this property is uh, $600,000 and you've paid it off over time and your loan is only $300,000. So you've got some money in here, the difference between what it's worth and what your loan is. So they said, listen, what we'll do is we'll cross securitize and we will lend you 100% on that property because we will lock up some of the equity on this property. Okay, fine. Yep. Okay, let's go then what happens? And usually what they'll say is like, oh, well, we might give you a 90% loan on that one. Okay. Then you go, you're like, oh, I like this. I like this. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, property investor now. I want to keep going. And you ask them for another one. And they said, all right, well, listen, why don't we uh, bundle those two? And at the same time, we'll cross it up with this one as well. So you get maybe to your second property if you're lucky. And they'll say, listen, across all of this, we're a bit concerned. So we want to reduce that one to 80%. Now you're able to be borrowing less now, okay? Then you have a look at your third uh, investment property because you want to be a property investor. And the bank says, oh listen, there's too much risk for us. Uh, we're not going to let you buy that third one um, because you don't have enough servicing. The risk is too high for us, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So cross collateralization. And when you look at the stats, the average property investor doesn't get past two investment properties, um, a huge amount, 80% of people fail to get past three investment properties when they start out their investment journey. And this is why. Cross securitization, cross collateralization, the more risk you have with one bank, the less loan to value ratio and the less money they want to lend you. Okay. Now, um, that's why we get stuck and we don't get to this property here. And then what happens is now we're all tangled. We're all bundled up. They've got our home loan, our investment properties, our savings account, our credit cards, our car. They have everything. And, and this is where I've seen some challenges for many people. Let's say you went and decided to start a business or you had a little bit of a challenge in your life or whatever. The bank has control of everything and then they can take money out of your savings account, um, credit card, you name it. There's some nasty things they can do. The better way the professional way, the smart investor way to do this is not to have any cross collateralizing going on. Now, let's say we want to achieve the same thing. We go to, um, and it doesn't matter, let's say you are at the bank, and let's say you do have um, 
um, a loan and, uh, and you've got your property which is worth $600,000 and you've got a loan here. What you do is you go and get a deposit account. It's uh, what's called a split in a loan. And let's say we've got $100,000 in this account. It's a new loan on top of the other loan that you're going to use for investing in property. Now, while those are all cross-collateralized, connected directly because of the same bank, we're gonna put a wall in here and we're actually gonna loan the money out, technically, out to this property to buy it. Now everyone says, well, what's the difference? The difference is this bank is not this bank. So we go, let's say, let's say this bank is CBA, and over here, I might go to um, a bank called First Mac, who, whatever, it's a bank out there. And then you say, I want to buy another investment property. Well, no problem. I can lend some money there, and I could lend some money there, and I could go to uh, Adelaide Bank. And then what happens is you go, oh, well, I want to buy a third investment property. No problem. We can lend some money from there. We could lend some money from there. If they've got equity, we could lend some money there. And let's say we go to now St. George. Uh, George. Each of these investment properties is a different lender with different calculations, loan to value ratio, servicing, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're not controlled by one institution. It's easier to borrow money as you go along um, and uh, you're, you're spreading the risk around so the institutions are less uh, risk uh, exposed in your property portfolio. So there you go, guys. As a property investor, cross collateralization, cross securitization, a big absolute no no. Don't do it. As uh, in the early days of your portfolio, it will be um, uh, it will be a handbrake. It'll hold you back when you set up the right redraw facilities and investment accounts. A smart, experienced finance broker who's an investment broker will know how to do this. If you don't know, give us a shout out. This is the way to do it. All right, there you go, guys. Setting up your finance structure is pretty important. If you, got, if you can't get oxygen or you can't get finance, it's like oxygen, you can't breathe. Um, and as a property investor, pretty important lesson. If you want to know more, get along to one of our property investment nights around the country. We're running uh, truckloads of them around Australia this year. So make sure you get along and learn what you need to to stay abreast of everything you need as a property investor. All right, take care. Bye for now.